Hello everyone and welcome back to the Ciphering Weather. In today's video, we're going to discuss La Nina returning in the Pacific Ocean. What does that mean for the upcoming Atlantic hurricane season? If you like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Welcome back everyone. I know it's been a few months since I've made a video, last one back in December. Uh, it's been a crazy couple of months here. Um, basically, it's been spending time with my family. My girls are in kindergarten. Homework's getting a little bit more challenging for them towards the second half of the year. So I've been spending more time with them. And basically just uh, didn't find it necessary to do hurricane videos during the middle of the winter. And here we are. We are now approaching hurricane season. We are just over a month away from the 2024 hurricane season beginning. So I thought better late than never to get a video out there. I don't know how often I can do them uh, between now and the beginning of the hurricane season, but I will try and get one out as often as I can as I help my kids with their homework uh, till the end of the, the school year, which is in June. So let's get to it. Looking at the latest satellite image of the Atlantic, and you can see all is quiet as it should be right now. Uh, the black arrow is pointing towards the intertropical convergence zone where all of the tropical activity is right now this time of year. It's just south, just north of the equator, slowly moving its way northward as the sun angle gets higher and higher in the sky as we approach the summer uh, solstice. We have a cold front that came off the east coast of the United States. By the Azores Islands, we have another non-tropical low that's spinning around out there but nothing that we're expecting to develop over the next few days or even the next couple of weeks you can see the vorticity the spin and energy in the atmosphere in the tropical convergence zone on the bottom of your screen nothing organizing we have that cold front which is that big long vorticity stretch from florida up to newfoundland and then we have that swirl out in the atlantic but that's non-tropical just some gale warnings worth it, nothing crazy uh, to think about right now. But in this vicinity is where we would see potential early tropical development during the month of May. Uh, something could always become subtropical in nature there, or in the Gulf of Mexico with these trailing cold fronts, something can break off there as well. So we'll keep an eye on these. Here's that satellite image of that cold front coming through. As you can see, nothing in terms of tropical development right now. And our non-tropical low near the Azores Islands, just spinning around, just some gale warnings associated with it. Nothing tropical in nature to worry about right now. National Hurricane Center is not expecting anything to develop over the next seven days. If we look over the next two weeks, the models are not showing anything. That activity is all non-tropical that you can see there. And if we look at the global tropical hazards outlook, even around the world, we're not expecting much tropical development as we go forward over the next two to three weeks either. So last time we looked at this map was back on November 3rd, and we were in full-blown El Nino at that point. As you can see in our black box there, that's our Nino 3.4 index. We were at our peak El Nino season, Back in the fall, going into the winter, one of the warmest years on record for 2023. 2024 looks to be even warmer, even with El Nino starting to dissipate. You can see how that contrasts from back in November. Uh, we can see how it's cooled down. We're starting to see that cooling, those anomalously cold waters starting to appear along the equatorial Pacific, especially off the coast of South America. And if we look at the Nino 3.4 index back in May last year, we were leaving La Nina, heading into El Nino for the summertime and fall, peaked during the fall period, as you can see here. And then now we're heading back out of El Nino and back towards neutral Enzo with the forecast heading towards La Nina once more for this upcoming hurricane season. If we look at the SOI dashboard, the Southern Isolation Index, what you basically need to know here is if we're in a positive territory, that's El Nino. If we're in negative territory, we're talking about 
La Nina, and the 90-day average is negative 7.57. That is the threshold to consider the beginnings of La Nina. February was a negative 15, which you can see compared to January, which was almost a 4. Positive 4 to negative 15, that's a big reversal in the pressure, pressure anomalies out in the Pacific. And what I mean by pressure anomalies, we're looking at the pressure over Darwin, Australia, and the island of Tahiti in the middle of the Pacific. And if it's negative, that means we have greater winds blowing from South America towards Australia. And that means we have more upwelling in the oceans, and that's going to drive up those cooler waters from below and bring them to the surface. If we look over the next... 35 days, we, this is the wind anomalies in that zone of the Nino 3.4 index. Those blues and greens basically mean we're going to have stronger than normal trade winds for the next month or so, with a little relaxing towards the middle of May, but then potentially going right back into very strong trade winds and La Nina conditions as we head in towards June. And again, what that means is looking at the subsurface, this graph here, the top of the box is the surface of the ocean, and then we go down from there depth-wise. All those blues below the surface are the anomalously cold waters. As La Nina kicks in, that's going to cause upwelling and bring those colder temperatures to the surface, and that's when La Nina will be triggered. So we look at our model predictions. And the ASO, August, September, October, where I have our black arrow, that's basically where we're going to see peak hurricane season conditions. And all the averages in that dark green, the red, and the dark blue lines right there, those are our model averages. Basically, it's saying we're going to be at negative 0.5 degrees Celsius or greater. And negative 0.5 degrees Celsius is the threshold for kicking off La Nina positive 0.5 would be El Nino, and anywhere in between is neutral Enzo. So we have a 60% greater, 60 or greater chance of seeing La Nina during the peak of hurricane season this year. So what does that mean? Well, here's what we normally see in the circulation patterns in the atmosphere. Normal would be on top. That's our neutral conditions where we would have the normal trade winds with some sinking in the Pacific, rising air in the Atlantic, rising air in the Western Pacific. El Nino is the reverse. We see a lot of rising air in, in the Eastern Pacific with sinking air in the Atlantic, which typically would mean less hurricanes. Now, that didn't happen last year because the Atlantic was so warm that it counteracted that and created its own lift mechanism, which is why we were so active. La Nina is basically the opposite of El Nino. We have the rising air going gangbusters in the Atlantic with a lot of sinking air in the Pacific, and that means not a lot of wind shear to blow apart these storms. And with the very warm Atlantic waters, which will be another video sometime later this week, that means with very little wind shear, La Nina, the very warm Atlantic, we could see a hyperactive season potentially this year. Here's the American and Canadian models, the climate models, showing this La Nina peaking sometime in the peak of hurricane season, or at least getting started August, September, October. And if we look at our precipitation anomalies, both models are showing a high amount above average precipitation in the main development region, Gulf of Mexico, Caribbean, between the islands of the Lesser Antilles and the coast of Africa, all in the green shading, which means doesn't necessarily mean development, but at least it's going to be active in terms of waves moving across and bringing a lot of precipitation. And if we are unlucky and we see development, this is potentially where the tracks are going to be going. So in terms of development, at least in the beginning of the season, We'll look towards the Gulf of Mexico, the Western Caribbean. That's where we had the Central American Gyra set up during the early part of the season. The Atlantic really doesn't get going 
not that early because temperatures typically aren't that warm enough yet. That could be different this year with the very anomalous warm waters. Also, the North Atlantic, sometimes we see subtropical development. But if more likely or not, if we're going to see development early in the season, especially in May, it's going to be in the Gulf of Mexico and the Western Caribbean because of the Central American gyra or any trailing cold fronts lingering and pinching off something vorticity-wise in the Gulf of Mexico. So we'll keep an eye on all this, and I'll try and get another video out as soon as possible, family permitting. Now, if you like what we're doing here, you can head over to our super thanks, donate anything you would like, go down to the heart button where it says thanks. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and leave a comment. Please share this video with your family and friends on social media. And if you're new and like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Thank you and have a great day.